You're live now. Oh, I'm just taking my battle axe and uh, making a bevel letter, but I'm going to show you how to do it too. Here's how you can do it. I'm going to wrestle this away from the wife with her birthday yesterday. It got wild, you know. <laughs> Welcome out there, beautiful people. Let's do some bevels. Like always, you've got to draw everything first. Shout out to Derek McDonald, Golden West. He works at Disney now. Okay. We'll start with our block letters. And I've already drawn this out for you. Easy. See these? These are the middle of the stroke. And I'm going to do numbers today because I normally don't do numbers. A lot of people wanted that. Putting this line is very important because you need to know where your letters are going to start and stop. So, we're going to be doing the box again. The lightest to the dark. Here's your light, your dark. Here's a couple, some references I did last night. You can do it with any color, really, but draw down the center. I'm going to get to a few of these other things as we go. So you just eye it up, down the center. Now you go out. you got to imagine this is what you're drawing, and this is the high point right there. There's one, one, and we're going to fade that a little bit. Again, the numbers are my cups. I'm going to do the same colors as you see here. One, two, three, four. Oh. Now, when it comes to rounds, It's what the light sees. So here, one, four, two, two, three. This is gonna be a one to two fade in there. And we're gonna put some four in there. Down the center. Points. It doesn't matter with this yin yang here on how you do it. It could be this way. It really doesn't matter. One, four. The lightest, the lightest, the lightest. The opposite, darkest. coming up to this. What do you do here? Well, bring it down. And where's the next? Goes out to the points. 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 Here's a crossroad right there. Remember that high point. And then where it starts, because you have this line. If you don't have that line, then some people do it here. The next one, they're doing it up here. It's not consistent. It has to stay consistent. See? I went down to the points. High, dark, light, dark, dark. We're going to do a little fade in there. Center. center, stop. Three, two, one, four. Start to get the idea. 
We go right down the center. Think about where that light is coming from. Point, 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 point. Going one to two, a fade. This will be four to three. This is two. These have to line up. That's gonna make it nice and sharp. Straight. One, four, one, four, one, four, four. Just like the six, upside down, right there. One, four, two, three, one, four, right there. Okay, I've got an X here and I'll explain what that's about. And what the sun sees. There's the light, the dark. Next to light, next to darkest. So where do you do this, yin yang? Well, think of the box. So there's one, there's two, three, four. That's what you see. But this is a point, so it goes up. The two, you're only gonna see this side, not that side, only this side. That's how you do it. If you got an R, Center, 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 out, out. Now here. Two, two, two. Think of it as an object. One, four, one, four, four. That's what you gotta keep in your mind. So, that's what I was just explaining right there. Now, here's how I start it. You start with two cups of white, not much, fill it up a little bit, and you take a straight color. Let's say we were doing this in blue. This would be like light blue, 152 light blue or alpha enamel blue. Put a little bit in there and then put a little more in there but this could be straight color and then straight color again only add maybe some dark brown try to avoid using black because that really deepens it too much so i'm going to start with the colors if you really want to see how this is supposed to look get a beveled number or letter like the number six here the e and that shows you where the sun comes from. There are excellent ways to do that. One, two, three with the old mop. Snapper, sorry. Always paint from the lightest color to the dark. Because in these nooks and crannies, you're going to go over the line. And the next color will cover up your mistake. And here's where you really got to get in there with your edges. We'll do a little white hitting the top here, and then we'll come and blend that with number two. 
Not much on here, but that's just how the sun sees it. We're using alpha enamel oil today, thinning with uh, turpentine. Do your edges. This is a good way to practice your edges. The sharper they are where it joins together, the better. I'm going to go right here. This will be the high point for the one. And I'm going to blend those for two. See how I'm starting the edge? I turn my chisel over and then I slowly turn it flat. Now, get the chisel, just like you're going down with the letter. High point, again. Hank Williams III, Tricephus in the background. After we do these numbers, I'm gonna take you over to where I'm, I did the gold leaf, where I'm gonna explain how I did that. And I'll be finishing it off with some colors. Here you are in your corners here. It's really critical you get those points. Slant, point. Like I see, these little things in there, you can clean those up. Start sideways, push down. Tip out. So if it goes round this way, the other one's going to go that way. Always put enough paint on there to anticipate when you come up with that next color. I moved this because I think it should be up a little further. It's just eyeing it up as you paint it. Way down in this corner. Now, these should be the same. But it, it, it isn't. This one should be that way. So when I go to paint this, I'll have to remember that. Because I think it should be more like this. Keep them all the same. But I like to show you my mistakes. Because I just go flying along in it. It's like, ooh, what looks wrong about this? So here we go. That one's going to be like this. So this one should be the other way. Like I say, the best way is to get a number or a letter that's carved and it'll show you everything. That's a way to study it. Okay, the light's coming here. Just like we did on the two, let's have the white, the, the, the number one, about there and then we blend it. With your number one, never make it a straight white. It should be your lightest, but not straight white because we're gonna come back in the center for your high point. And that should be white. So with something like 
this again the same way I'm gonna fade it off so that's where the Sun will see it these little hips that the Sun's gonna see and make it a point it's gonna come right to a point that's what makes it sharp Remember this one goes like this. I think I'm gonna change this. Cause this mm -hmm. way it's see more and that's the other way. Just like that. There we go, that's number one. Oops. It. Oops. It. Yes. <laughs> Pull in a china shop here. <laughs> go to the next color, clean your brush. One, two, three. So everything here is two. I started my brush sideways to get into that corner. And now you can turn it to get in there. Now the splendid part. Poor man's airbrush. There it is. <laughs> mm. Are there any alternative tools for blending so we aren't touching the paint? You could get a small brush that really small hairs on it to have here to, to do that. And I've done that before and I'll do that on like glass when I'm blending. Yeah, there is.
Okay. I'm going to come back with my number one here. Here's my two. I'm going to do the edge and then blend. And I'm doing the high part. So this fades up. It wasn't much white, but it was just enough. The other colors are gonna take care of that when I get to those, so it's okay. You don't have to be too sloppy with that, but just to show you, because I know you'd have questions. If you were sitting right here, go ahead, fire away. What are some questions? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Or it doesn't work that way when I do it. What's up? So I'm doing this wet on wet. You could also do this like this, into the next color. But I like to blend it real quick while it's still wet. I think it looks better. So the confidence builds as you go along with the colors. But this is after, you know, you, you've started doing your basic block. After a long time being frustrated with just doing your basic colors and everything. But if you draw this out and do this, you'll see how it, it really helps your confidence to just go, oh, I could do that. All I did was those four colors and look at how it's looking like it's raised. That's pretty cool. I like that. I get it. And you'll start to look at these in real life. You'll say, hey, what's going on there? See how the yin yang part, I'm not too concerned about it now because I just blend that. It really doesn't matter. But if you want to do it like this, then it, it does. Is it best to always outline the letter number? <laughs> yeah, um, it, it depends on what you're making. Um, like this script one here, I outlined it. I think it really needed it. Um, you don't have to, because sometimes if you do it just clean enough, then, then you, don't, you don't have to worry about that. I like to outline it later because I think it pushes it out more. Plus it would cover the red. Can you show us a serif convex as well? Yes. For example, A or R. Mm-hmm. know exactly what they're talking about where do you blend when it comes yeah. down to the end that's a tough one there's a little sliver right in there
Okay, when you come down, this is Sarah. What I used to do in the past, I would come out straight here and there'd be this um, awkward gap in there. That's the key to doing serifs like that. So the next color comes in. So really keep it going out there like that. And then your next color comes up to there. That's what helps. Because I fought with that for a long time. It's like, oh, there's this uncomfortable area here. If you want to do this technique on glass, would you blend with a piece of sponge? Yes, or a rag. Sponge would be good. Um, and sometimes you do it where you have a mirror on the other side. And you blend it so you can see exactly what it's looking like. So, it's a little thick. A little bit of thinner in there. Have your stuff available and ready to go. Okay, a little darker. Here we are with number three. A little bit over there, but we can clean that up. Three. Number one starting to dry, but it's still okay. And you keep number four in there. One thing when you're doing this to remember, do it a little bit extra on where you're supposed to go. That way the next color you're okay. I used to do it where I wouldn't do it enough, then I'd have to come back with the next color to take up the slack for that. Now in areas like this, I'm going to do these other ones and I'll come back to it because it has to have a different color than this because the sun is just seeing it different. Turn it. You really want this, this intersection here has to be sharp. That's what really makes the difference. So the next color I'm gonna bring back in is number one in here. You can't have one next to this, because then it wouldn't matter. So I'm gonna do a little bit there. And then my three.
excellent practice for your tip outs. You really need it, especially when you're doing a bevel like on a script. You really got to get in those corners. We are going ahead with. Uh, a workshop here in Mazeppa in July. The, uh, the Mazeppa Days parade and fireworks and all that celebration has been canceled. Uh, but we're going to use the social distancing and all the, the things where you're supposed to and keep everybody safe. But if you're interested and you still want to come to Mazeppa and We'll show you the whole hospitality and everything again. Free lodging, we can pick you up the airport as a shuttle. And if you're an alumni, wanna come and uh, do some more work again and see your friends and uh, bring a project, you're more than welcome. We'll have the, you can stay over to Rhonda's again, beautiful hair place over there. And, Bars are starting to open up. There's only two in Mazeppa, but they should be <laughs> open in uh, June 1st here next week. All of our bars are opening. <laughs> so, not back to completely full normal yet, but Mazeppa's never really been normal. <laughs> um, that's what makes it Mazeppa. I'm gonna leave that part for the four. There's a couple underneath. But if you've never done this at one of my workshops, I hope this gives you an insight to see what it is and just how simple it is. It's not, at first it can be real um, annoying, daunting, whatever, a, a big mountain to climb, but as you see, I just break it down to how simple it is. It, you can do it. Just draw it all out first, and and there you can make the magic. It's not that that difficult. And I can sure help you at the classes. That's what it's all about. That's my job. And to refresh people that have taken the class, hopefully you you can go back to doing some bevels because you probably haven't done them in a long time. But just do it to uh, keep yourself sharp and and enjoy it, and uh, if you haven't reached out to the, the fun people in your class, maybe do that. It's really been great where it's made uh, some really good friends along the way. We all seem to keep in touch, because we're all in this together, that's what it's about. I'm sure you hear enough of that on the TV and all that stuff, but uh, It's different with the sign painting community. We are, as you, if you went to a letterhead meet, you know about that, where it's, it is family. And speaking of that, if you haven't signed up for our uh, virtual online letterhead meet, which is called Lockdown Letterheads, that's coming up June 6th and 7th. And you can, uh, see demonstrations like I'm doing now with uh, quite a few other talented people from around the world. It's going to be a first time ever done and Sam of Better Letters is going to talk to us about it after I finish this. We're going to switch over to him for a little info. He's, he'll be coming to you live from Spain and uh, any questions you might have. Now's the time this this far ahead of time to get um, your computer set up, which you probably already have because you're here now watching this, to get it set up so you're ready for that. And now we're ready to go to no color number four. Wash your brush out. Wipe it. One, two, three. Wipe again.
Okay, color four. This is going to complete it. Here we go. Chiseling on that cup. Halfway, get my whale tail like usual. Sideways, bam. Make sure you do this, this blend change at the same place. That's what makes it work. You squint your eyes and you can see that. And then your white going right down the middle is just gonna make it all the sharper. Finger painting, wee! That's all you gotta do. <laughs> Do you always paint the line down the middle? Yeah, but you don't have to. It would just look a little wonky if you didn't. But just like I say, the rules are there are no rules. I bet it would really look good at some instance because I know when I was taught things in the sign industry, it was pretty strict. No, you have to do this, you have to do that. But then I would go out and see it done exactly the opposite of the way they said not to do it. And it looked pretty good. So who's to say? Keep an open mind. And yeah, can you do it that way? I'm sure you can. I know a guy that probably could prove that. And that would be <laughs> Gloss Black out of Philly. Mm -hmm. He does some fantastic stuff where you, you just look at it going, how do you even think about doing that? I love it. He took my class in Philly. He's a good friend. Follow Gloss Black on Instagram. Great stuff. I just, you got to keep searching for stuff. And I, I see his things and I haven't tried it yet. And I even told him, I said, I want to try some of the stuff like you're doing with the letters that are all funky and all that. And he said, well, where is it? So well, I'm getting to it. Give me a break. <laughs> but I really want to try that. And that's so fun. And that's the way it should be, where you reach out to somebody and, you know, like, compliment them. I, I really like what you do. That's impressive. I mean, I didn't know who he was in my class. And somebody said, hey, did you know that's Gloss Black? And I'm like, oh, I follow him. He does great stuff. Like, what are you doing here? You don't need this. But he's very humble and a uh, great guy. And the thing is... There's different aspects of lettering that everybody needs, so why not? I, I'd like to take a few classes myself, because I don't know it all. Sure is fun trying it all, but you just got to give it the time. Did you add brown to that color? I did. It's not straight black, because sometimes I want to keep that in my back pocket. If I really need to get some darker in there, I've got the black. And I think what we'll do is we'll go over, after this, we'll go over to the gold and it'll give this time to set up and then I can come back and do the white highlights. We have right 20 minutes side. left. Until we switch? Well, no, until 9, it's 9.40. Already? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit, I guess I yep. better get going here. We better get over to that. And uh, make sure you tell Sam First come, first serve, whoever wants this. I think we already got a taker. Okay, good. Email Sam, though. And I'm, I haven't got it out there yet, and some of you have emailed me. Thank you. We'll get you the info. 
and the prizes, the sizes, and the prices for the brushes. <clears throat> We've just been busy doing other sign work, but we're gonna get to you. We're not gonna switch to Sam. Oh, okay. We were gonna switch to Sam, but we're not. But that's okay. He's he's Mr. Organized. You can't go wrong. Can't get any better than the skipper. Put the hammer down, Mike. Come on, here we go. <laughs> Any finger can work. You got ten of them. Try them all. <laughs> Do you have the Mazeppa show card somewhere? Mm. I don't know where it is. I think it's up in the stack of all oh, of them. Okay. The purple one, maybe. We had a heck of a storm, Mazeppa, last night. Some trees down. Some uh, electrical, or it's down. But Mazeppans are smart. They keep their beer <laughs> with ice. They keep a generator. It's like not their first rodeo. Okay, gotta get down and dirty in here to make this right. Sam, I think the show card is put up somewhere. So we'd have to dig it out. We can post it later. Yeah. Okay. They did not rebuild the bar yet. Nope. And I doubt if that's going to happen. Just isn't enough people that work and do stuff in this area to support something like that. Although, we have an auction place that's down at the end of the block, and it's getting bigger and bigger every two weeks. And boy, the town sure could use a little diner for a cafe for breakfast to feed hungry sign painters when they're here. Not that Chris Lovelady doesn't do a great job with breakfast, <laughs> but... Uh, just saying. We'll see what happens with this pandemic. It changes a lot of things. A lot of people's attitudes, a lot of businesses. But hopefully it's a good thing coming out of it. And you know, things are starting to creep open again, which is good. Just don't go at it too fierce and be safe. I finally got my Studebaker out, which been sitting there nine months and hadn't been fired up, and I fired her right up. No problem. Fifteen minutes left. Two? Fifteen. Oh, okay. <laughs> Good, we'll get over there. Okay. There you go. Oh, careful. I hope that showed you the basics on how to to uh, do block numbers. You should sell a poster about these numbers at some point. Okay, now we're gonna go over. Georgie. <laughs>
did this process on my van years ago. I had a nice serif letter style and I bought a whole bunch of gold leaf and I thought, I'm gonna do four kinds of gold. It's just gonna look great. Come here, Georgie. So what I did was, last night, this is 18 karat, that's 23. And on my van years ago, I thought, after I did these two, it was really gonna be too bright. So I thought, let's just leave the one and two. And now, here's three, let's just leave it with pink. So I can't do the finger blend on that. So I'll show you what I'm gonna do is, be thinner. So now I'm doing three. Oops, that was four. This side. Sharp. Okay. Let's go to the three on this one. Of course, I'll, I'll do an outline high point when it's all done. I'll post the picture. It's paint you're using, not size, correct? Right. Yep, we sized it last night. One hour size. And I had the fan on it, which made it speed it up a little bit more. Worked out pretty good. Okay, that's three. Now I'm gonna do four, the darker. So here's where those sharp edges really, really help. And that was almost four there, so it doesn't really show as much. Somebody just asked, did you ever use a mask because of the mineral sp spirits? I cannot use enamel paint without a mask. I never have, but I've been spraying a lot of chemical paints for a long time. If, if it does bother you, yes, I would wear one. And we've had pregnant women in classes too, and they wore them. It's just a good safety precaution, so yeah. Plus, sometimes you don't realize it. You get right into the work and then you're closer to the solvents. So I'm always keeping an eye on the width. They should be the same. Because if they're not, your eye will go right to that and you'll see it. Those little lines at the end of the color, what are they for? It's a way to blend. Yep, it's a way to blend it. When you get back further, you're gonna see the blend. Up close, you don't really see it this way but you will. If you squint your eyes, you can tell it.
Do you teach the, this gold bevel style in the workshops? I don't, but I'm going to start. I'm then going to bring some gold along, but we like to keep it to the gold workshops. But it sure can be done. You can even do this on paper. But we try not to mix it up too much because then there's more expense with it where we got to get size, we got to get gold, we got to have different things going on for it. But if you take the gold workshop, that will really advance you. You'll see the techniques. Again, it's really simple, but you can do really, really higher end work. And it's, it's not that much. Do you use a protection on the top of the gold when it's dried? Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Reason being, I've done it enough where I've done clear on it, and the clear, it depends on what the background was. I did one on a topper that didn't have any windows, and the topper was fiberglass and it flexed, and it made the clear coat crack off. I've done it on fire trucks where it's more the solid metal door and then and they wash them a lot so that worked out better eight but minutes otherwise if I do I use the automotive clear where you got to mix it together and you just go just enough around the letter not the whole thing you just do enough that looks like a little seal around the whole thing but you can see when I did the gold, I took the velvet and I burnished it. And that way, to make it look that round. Because when you do that gold after you've laid it, it's like carpet. And then when you burnish it, it takes the hairs down and it'll stay that way. And you can even do a corner where you fold it and then do it that way. You can use cotton, but velvet is really nice to use. This is an experiment that I was doing with size and we put bronze powder on it. This one, we waited, and then I pushed it on. It's kind of a, a vintage, distressed look. And at certain points, you can see. You can also do it on glass, but always be experimenting. So what I'll do on this is outline it with maybe bright red right out of uh, the alpha enamel. And then maybe another one out of that, maybe a, a black or vice versa or you can shadow it. This already has the illusion of going up, so I probably wouldn't shadow it, but I'll clean it off nice and we'll post a picture of it too. But as you can see, we started with the simple list with like the battle axe, happy birthday over there, the numbers. We kept it really simple. So how do you add this to your everyday sign stuff? Well, it could be somebody's main name for their sign, a farm sign, a truck lettering, that's where you can add it. You know, go about it the sensible way to think, well, I'd like to bevel that, but here's Mississippi and all that. Think about it, it's a lot of work. If it's just big and bold like that, that would work a little better. Plus, you can get in there and get your stuff going. And then you gotta think about it for the outlining and shadows too. But bevel is really, really simple. Just remember to draw it down the middle. Push yourself to take some letters, blow them up, and just say, how would he bevel this? Let's go right down the middle. Just like the, the script that I did over there that says winter, there's gotta be a way. You just go right down the center and think about where the light's coming from. And draw it out. Like we say, draw like a turtle, 
paint like a rabbit, then you'll get it. And you can go over those edges to create it. So, could you see that on a, a truck, even your own truck, saying signs, gold leaf? And people are going to come over and touch it. And they'll go, wow, that isn't sticking out. Wow, you do that? Yes, it can be done that way. You can do it. Can it be done on glass? Yes. You just got to do the reverse part of it. So I would take the white, going right down the middle first, and then you add your colors. As a matter of fact, what do we got? A couple minutes? Four. I'm going to get some white to put on the center. highlight. I got a different brush, really fine hairs on it. I'm only going to do this in the, the parts that I think the sun is going to hit. So nothing down here. Gonna go up. Of course I'm have an outline that's going to clean that up. Thin to wide. Coming around. Splitting the difference. Now you can see she's really going to get sharp. Sometimes in these areas, let's say the sun's going to hit it here. A minute 30 left. A little shine. So there you go, you guys, that's uh, your beveling or convex lettering. You can do it the other way where it goes down in, which is called convex. I'm sorry, concave. Fifty seconds. You're welcome, guys. Thanks, you guys. And uh, we'll dream up something for next week. Give us your suggestions if you'd like. Maybe we'll, uh, maybe chrome letters or something. But I'll come up with something. It's always fun to uh, visit with you and do this Bob Ross kind of stuff for you. I love it. Keep in touch. And uh, drop us a line. We'll try to get those <laughs> prices and everything out for the brushes too. I'm sorry, I'll get on that. Hi, Sayumi. Sayumi! <laughs> Alright, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.